Hello there and welcome back everyone. This is Max from MaxJanker.com and in this video we're going to talk about dumpers remorse, specifically the stages of dumpers remorse. So let's get right into it. Dumpers remorse is essentially an emotion that your ex feels when they dump you but regret it later. And while it does help you get them back, it does help them uh, their attraction to rise, it's not a guarantee that you two will actually get back together in the end. Just putting that out there, it's very important for you to know. Another very important characteristic of dumper's remorse is that unlike other emotions like anger or sadness, for example, it doesn't just shoot up instantly in your ex's mind, it comes very gradually. Now, when I say your ex fuels dumpers and wars gradually, I'm referring to stages. Your ex begins in stage one and then continues with dumpers and wars, continues to amplify the emotion through stages one, two, three, four, and so on and so on. Not every ex will go through these six stages that I'm going to list in this video. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes, starting with stage number one, certainty. So this first stage is categorized by your ex being absolutely certain that dumping you was the right decision. The amount of certainty people feel, it differs from person to person, and it all has to do with a bunch of tiny factors. For example, the length of your relationship. Basically, was it like a three-month fling or was it a 10-year serious relationship? Then the type of your relationship. Was it long distance? Was it an infidelity-driven one? Was it healthy? Was it unhealthy? Things of that nature. Also, your level of maturity is very important and as well as your ex's level of maturity. And when I say maturity, I essentially mean spiritual and emotional growth. And finally, Another like big factor, the last one I'm gonna list because there's a bunch of smaller ones that like don't matter, but this is the last of the bigger ones that does. It's the number of post breakup mistakes you've made. So were you needy after your breakup? Were you begging your ex to come back? Were you pleading with them? Did you try to bargain with them? Have you tried to manipulate them? Have you tried to cajole them into coming back? All of these things big mistake, big post-breakup mistakes that you want to avoid. Now let's move on to stage two, relief. So here's the harsh truth. Your ex simply was frustrated and stressed and has basically had it with you. And that's why they at some point left. That's why they dumped you. They wanted less of you. And the more that holds true for your relationship, the higher the chance, the higher the likelihood that right now they're feeling even more relief than you and me both think. Let me put it this way. It's also very natural for your ex to be relieved at this moment. So relief can make us do some pretty wild shit. So don't be surprised if you see your ex behaving and acting very oddly or uncharacteristically to their personality. This does happen often when they are in this stage. Generally speaking, the more weird behaviors your ex exudes, displays, well, the more relief they probably feel, the happier they probably are to get rid of you, essentially. The next stage on our list is stage three, which is all about elation or the free at last feeling. Your ex essentially in this stage feels like they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, with whoever they want, and there's no one that's, that is going to put like constraints on their personal freedom, on their decision-making behaviors, etc., etc. Now, a quick warning, be realistic, or to put it in a bit of a better way, stay realistic during this stage. I know it may seem like your ex is having the time of their life, but trust me, the truth is buried somewhere between that extreme and somewhere between the other extreme, which is that they are actually suffering and they are actually sad. So don't essentially believe whatever you see 
when you maybe like stalk your eggs during this stage, which I know we all do it from time to time, it's not a problem at all, it happens. Now stage four is where things begin to lighten up a little. That is, if your ex ever arrives to this stage, which, like I said, it's not always the case. But if they do, this is a stage where they will start to compare other people with you. They'll maybe even stalk you on social media. They'll compare the other people they're essentially dating even with you. They'll even start to a tiny degree during this stage grieve and actually maybe even feel a little bit emotional when they think of you and when they compare you to other people. They're also going to, if you played your cards right, if you gave your ex space, they're also gonna start to think about you more, go to places where you two spend time together. And the sole reason they do this is because they're getting curious. And when curiosity like that enters the picture, there's also a good chance that they will become more realistic. They will forgive certain mistakes you've made and they will start to perceive your relationship through a more realistic light. Maybe they will even find out that they themselves weren't the best partner and that they can and should do better. Who knows? Just keep these things in mind. Now, stage five is when your ex begins to feel nostalgia for you. And so, when nostalgia enters the picture, your ex is not only going to start to miss you, but they will also begin to forget, or not really forget, but overlook the negative aspects of your relationship and focus more and more on the positive ones, making them much more likely to actually reach out. Now, the final stage, stage six, or the regret stage of dumper's remorse, is when your ex due to their missing, feelings of missing you, actually reaches out. Now, this won't be always a direct reach out, like, you know, through a, through a fucking text message. No. I'm talking about an indirect reach out. Your ex will likely start by simply liking, let's say, your profile posts or Instagram posts, checking your stories on Instagram, stuff like that, stuff that kind of goes under the radar, that's not a direct indicator of interest. And sooner or later, if you give them even more space, they just might actually reach out directly to you. However, even in those cases, like, sometimes you're not gonna get much. Sometimes you're just gonna get something like, hey, this movie reminded me of you, or I was just in a restaurant that we ate for our 69th date, or something like that. They, your ex will not probably, although it happens if the person is very direct in general, but, like, most of the time, your ex won't just say or type or text something like, let's get back together, I still love you, I miss you. That's scary, your ex doesn't know how you feel, they don't want to get rejected, so uh, it's very rarely the case that they will put themselves on the line like that. What will most likely happen is, like I said, an indirect response, and when that does happen, all you really have to do is go and start a quick conversation, a short conversation, maybe three to five messages back and forth, if you're on a call, maybe a five minute phone call, when they initiate, and sometime during that call or text and exchange, when reasonable essentially, so you don't like come off as too robotic, invite them on a date. For more info on this topic, by the way, check out my video on how to get an ex back. I'll link it somewhere on the screen right now because it goes way deeper into this whole process of how to date your ex, how to respond when they reach out, how to actually set a definite date with them all the nine yards, my whole approach. It's a really good long video for you to watch if you're interested in this subject. Also, if you want to go deeper into getting the next bag, download my reattraction cheat sheet. I'm going to link it down below and I'll see you in a later video. Take care.